Apple really likes their MacBooks to run quiet. And while that's great for our ears, it is not good for the chips themselves. With Apple's stock fan curve, if I run a Cinebench multi-core test, within about a minute, the chip is hitting 102 degrees at its hottest part and the fans are idling. So while yes, the laptop is going to stay very quiet under load, there is also the reasonable likelihood that running your laptop chip this hot for extended periods of time could cause your laptop to not live as long. Basically, long story short, heat is bad for computers, so the hotter a computer is running for a longer amount of time, the more likely it is that something is going to fail. So what we're going to be doing is using a software called TG Pro, which allows us to set our own custom fan curves, which will override Apple's fan curves, and then we can tell our fans to run as fast or slow as we want, and we can keep the chip as cool as we want. Also, I'm using a 16-inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max in this video, but it doesn't really matter which MacBook you have. TG Pro supports basically all the MacBooks. The one caveat to that is if you're using a MacBook Air from the M series, so M1 and on, those are all going to be fanless designs, so we're not going to be able to adjust the fan curves because they don't have fans. All right, so first things first, go ahead and download TG Pro. It does cost money. It's not free software. It's right now it's on sale for five bucks, but it's usually 20. And just for full transparency, I am not in any way associated with TG Pro. I just found them and I think it's good software. So that's why I'm recommending it, but I am not associated with them. They're not paying me to do this. I just like the software. All right. So once it's downloaded, you're just going to download it. It'll pop up right up here in your menu bar. And once you see it running like this in the menu bar, it might not look exactly like this because I've customized mine a bit, but when it's running like this, you can click on this. And if you scroll down into settings, here's how we're going to adjust the actual settings for TG Pro and our fan speeds. So you might be in one of these. So just click over to fan. And now here I'm going to clear all of these out and then we'll go over exactly how to set a fan curve so that your Mac doesn't run super hot. So let me close all of these because this is my custom fan curve and I'll do the same thing for battery. They allow you to set different fan curves for when you're on battery versus when you're uh, attached to power. And so now that we have this all cleared out, we have no fan rules. There's nothing in this box. Now we're going to start adding our own rules. And the first rule I would set is hit this plus sign right here and you can set here the options. You can set all fans or left or right. I don't know why you would ever want to set left or right individually, but you can. I wouldn't recommend it, but feel free. So it's saying all fans to what percentage do you want the fans to run at when any sensor or when you can choose what sensor you want when this sensor is above this temperature. So the fans are going to go to this speed when this sensor is at this temperature. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to set all fans to how about 20% when any sensor, yeah, we could do any sensor is at, we'll say 50 degrees. That's a good baseline. So that's saying when anything in the computer hits 50 degrees, we're going to idle the fans. 20% is about idle. So I feel good about that. And now we're just going to keep on building up the curve, which is that our ending result is we want the fans to be fully maxed out when the chip is running super hot. So we're kind of slowly ramping up to that. So now we'll do uh, fans to how about 40% when, and honestly, you can change this over to highest CPU and there's nothing wrong with that. But I would recommend just going any sensor uh, because if you have sensors that are going to be hotter than, let's say, your, your CPU, well, probably you want to be running your fans more anyway then. So then I change this to any sensor and then we can ramp this up to, how about we'll say when this is at 65 degrees and we're just going to keep on doing that. So now we'll do fans to 60%, 60% when any is at 75 and we'll add another one and that's, that's looking pretty good. So now we'll do fans to 80 when they're at, we'll say 85. And the last one is at 100% when any sensor is at 95. Now, this is kind of a this is kind of a safety thing, which is that we're saying, "All right, if anything is that hot at 95 degrees Celsius, we want the fans to 100%." Now, this is where you can decide. Maybe you want it to run a little hotter, you could change this to 100. Uh, that'd be no problem. I like my my chip to run a little cooler because that will hopefully increase the overall longevity of the chip if it's not running super hot all the time. So I would do something along these lines. And again, you can change these. So if this isn't working for you, just change them up as things go. But then don't forget to do this, which is copy all to battery so that when you are on battery power, you'll have the same fan controls. So copied to battery. And now if we click over here, we can tell it's the exact same as power. Also, if you're finding this video useful, consider subscribing. It's free for you and it really helps me out. Thank you.
And then the last thing to look at is the auto boost gradual time. This is when when the chip hits that temperature, how long will the tamp fans take to ramp up? And you don't want this super short or else as soon as the chip hits that, you're going to the fans are going to ramp up really fast and it's going to be very audible and noticeable. So I would set some amount of delay. I've got some mindset to 10 seconds, which is that it'll slowly ramp to the desired fan speed over the course of 10 seconds. You can lower that if you want. You can raise it if you want. It's up to you. Um, but I would just try and make sure it's not at one second or else your fans are going to be ramping up and down all the time and the quick changes in fan speed are most noticeable to the ear if the fan changes really slowly you don't notice it too much but if it's a fast ramp up and you hear the fans spin up really quick that's when you notice the fans uh most often so i would just i would recommend setting some amount of gradual delay for the fans and so now that we've done that we can close out and just to make sure our fans are working just how we want them to work let's run a multi-core load on cinebench and now we are going to watch as soon as we start this benchmark you're going to see temps go way up and we'll just watch here's our fan speed so you can see okay right now we're at 75 we're at 80 degrees already and the fans are ramping up now keep in mind when this was the stock fan and there you can probably hear the fans kicking in. When we were using Apple's stock fan curve, the chip hit 102 degrees Celsius with the fans at idle, which to me is criminal. I mean, that's that's going to lower the overall longevity of your laptop, of your chip, for sure. That's just a really, really hot uh, environment for a chip to be running in in the long run. Whereas this, you can see, okay, we're settling in now and we should let it run longer, but now we're settling in and you can tell the fans are somewhere around eh, maybe 4,000. Chip is settling in around low 80 degrees. That's nearly 20 degrees cooler than Apple's stock fan curve. So this is going to give you dramatically better results as far as cooling your chip. And if you're a nerd like me, you get the peace of mind of knowing that your laptop is not running over 100 degrees Celsius when you're doing things like exporting videos because that's just kind of crazy. So anyway, that is how you set a custom fan curve using TG Pro. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thanks for watching the video. See you guys in the next one.